so very good morning to all uh, this is lecture number 4 on the complexity analysis of algorithms so in this uh, lecture uh, we will revise the time complexity analysis taking few algorithms later we will look into the asymptotic upper bound asymptotic lower bound and asymptotic tight bound okay and we will graphically see all these uh, upper bound lower bound and uh, tight bound okay so in simple these these are the uh, best case analysis okay worst case analysis and average case analysis okay so finally we will derive the upper bound and lower bound for a typical uh, sorting algorithm so we will take a sorting algorithm and we will see that how can we derive the time complexity, the lower bound and the upper bound for such an interesting algorithm. And we will end this lecture giving some uh, very uh, interesting and very practical problems, which are very, very popular in uh, today's machine learning and deep learning uh, area, right? So um, where there is a scope for developing a sophisticated algorithm, and analyzing their time complexity and space complexity, right? So all these things uh, you can do, but we are not, uh, I'm not forcing you to do all these assignments, but uh, it is just to uh, make you understand that this algorithm course goes beyond fourth semester, right? So it is, though you are in the fourth semester, but learning will not end, design and analysis of algorithms will not end at the end of your fourth semester it will it will go throughout your life right so let us begin this uh, lecture lecture number four okay so in the in the previous uh, lecture two and lecture three we, uh, we saw how to derive the time complexity of an algorithm so in this uh, slide i have shown a very very simple algorithm so it uh, here is a variable x which keeps on adding that is x equal to x plus y, right? So it is very simple representation. So how many operations are there in this particular um, uh, instruction? There are there are number of operations are two. One is assignment, the other one is the plus operator. So two operations. And what is the frequency of this statement is one. So the time complexity, this is the t is proportional to one into two. That is number of operations into the frequency of operation that is uh, number of operations is 2 frequency of operation is 1 so this is 2 and now if i substitute the proportionality constant uh, proportion uh, proportionality with some constant c then this is t equal to c into 1 and this algorithm uh, is a theta is a constant algorithm in terms of theta so theta 1 algorithm why this is theta 1 algorithm because the best case and the worst case for this algorithm is same so uh, we will look uh, uh, into the details later on, but let us assume that the, the, uh, this is the time complexity t is equal to theta of 1. And in general, this is a uh, O of big O, big O of 1. That is the constant time algorithm. So now let us make this algorithm a little bit complex. So algorithm 2 is, now I am repeating the statements x equal to x plus y for I equal to 1 to n, right? So now I have added a loop here and I'm adding these things, okay, again and again up to n. So here we have, we already know that this type of for loop has three operations. So I equal to I plus 1 and I is greater than n. So three operations, x equal to x plus y has two operations. So total there are three operations associated with this statement and number of operations here are phi. And what is the frequency of operation? Frequency of operation, let us take that this is n, okay? So now simply you multiply the number of operations and the frequency of the operation that is t is proportional to phi n and t is equal to c n and t equal to theta of n. So in general, this is a O of n algorithm, right? So this is very clear to you. I'm just revising all these things. Now let us take the algorithm number three, okay? Little bit advanced. Now if, now here, if A is greater than B, then X equal to X plus Y, X equal to X divided by two. So if A is greater than B, this set of operations will take place. 
else this operation will take place right for i equal to 1 to n do x equal to x plus y will take now let us try to calculate the um, uh, the number of operations so if if loop is executed right if the if condition is executed then uh, number of operations is one and frequency is one if then right if this condition is uh, true then the then will be the statements after then will be executed and number of operations here are four two plus two and the frequency is one okay so this is the operator uh, okay, here and of after else the number of operations are five and the frequency is n right so now here there are two things one is the best case complexity and the second one is the worst case complexity or you can tell there there is a lower bound and upper bound for these algorithms so t best which is the t best because the operate the number of operations and frequency is very less here right so this is t best is proportional to the first half is a t best case which is proportional to 1 plus 4 equal to 5 so it is just a constant time algorithm uh, so t best is just 5 operations and t worst is what 1 plus 1 is for if and the other other one is for the phi n is for the else condition here phi n so t lower bound is proportional to omega of 1 t upper bound is proportional to means it is equal to c2 okay and uh, c2 uh, into 1 plus phi n which is equal to c2 plus c3 n and this is equal to o of t upper bound is equal to big o of n right so this is the time complexity now let us have a little bit more um, complex algorithm so which is algorithm number four so if a is greater than b please carefully listen uh, to this um, okay just see this algorithm if a is greater than b okay then okay if this is true then if a is greater than c right for i equal to one to root n do x equal to x plus y okay if it is false if this is false then this will be executed which is else for i equal to 1 to root n for j equal to 1 to n do x equal to x plus y okay this will be done here and what is the, uh, if this if a is greater than b fails then this else will be executed okay this else is for i equal to 1 to root n for j equal to 1 to m for k equal to 1 to n do x equal to x plus y so this is an algorithm now here if you carefully see this algorithm you will feel you will feel that the best case for this algorithm is here right the best case uh, for this algorithm is here where a is greater than b and a is greater than c this will be executed which is the worst uh, case uh, for for this algorithm the worst case is for this algorithm is if a is not if a is not greater than b then this part of the program will be executed and this is a this is a worst case time complexity because you can see that there are three for loops here i j and k are three for loops so now let us derive the time complexity for this for this particular algorithm so here if we see uh, if we see this one right the t lower bound okay t lower bound is equal to in this case 1 plus 1 so thus uh, this is just a uh, computation here for if this is 1 again if this uh, a is greater than b one computation a is greater than c another computation so that's why you see 1 plus 1 and 3 plus 2 is for uh, for loop and this is for do statement that is 3 plus 2 here sorry 3 plus 2 is 5 and there is a for loop here which uh, which goes up to root n so i have added root n here okay so 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 root n so which is equal to 2 plus 5 into root n which is omega of this is the this is the best case omega of root n right this is the best case time complexity now the upper bound let us see the upper bound which is proportional to same way if condition then followed by the if this fails right and then what happens uh yeah so then uh this three three uh three for this for loop three operations for this j for loop three operations for k for loop and two operations for um this uh, statement x equal to x plus y now we just see here so three plus two n then three plus 
this plus m and 3 plus 3 plus so this i think you can understand this uh, 3 plus 2 is for n and this plus this operation is for m and this all thing is for root n so now when you simplify this you can feel you can see that 1 plus 3 into root n 3m root n plus 5nm root n so now you if you simply simplify this then uh, yeah, the the biggest uh, term in this particular case is m uh, it is uh, m into n into root n so the upper bound for this algorithm is uh, big o of mn root n so this is the look the complexity is just m into n into root n right so this is a time this is the worst case uh, time complexity for this algorithm now computing time is essentially dependent upon the number of times each statement is executed right so uh, um, i think till now you might have observed that the frequency of operation is very very fundamental in in deciding the time complexity of the algorithm and some of the, some of the frequencies of all the statements uh, so in the time complexity notation this is a big o which is a big o notation right defines the upper bound notation uh, okay so now this is here big o of n square root n suppose let us take that the time complexity of an algorithm is big o of n square uh, into root n now we see that this is a function of n so now this is a what is this this is the, uh, this itself is a function of n and now you you see that again the o is also a this is also a function of n so uh, the inner inner part is also a function of n the outer part is also a function of n so now we can simply we can write that the time complexity that is the time the actual computing time which is f of n is equal to o big o of g of n okay so inside one is also a function of function and i represent that as g of n and the outer part is also a uh, function of n so uh, just uh, remember this representation okay we always tell that f of n is the actual computing time is equal to big o of okay g of n so what does this imply when i tell this big o of g of n we'll see in the coming slides so here uh, where uh, in this uh, um, like f, uh, f of n is equal to big o of g of n i told in the previous slide there f of n is the computing time of an algorithm which is machine dependent so this is called as f of n is called as actual computing time of your algorithm right it is not the theoretical uh, time but it is the actual practical actual running time of your algorithm and g of n is the computing nature of the algorithm obtained by the a priori analysis whatever we have derived okay using the number of operations and frequency of operations that is that is the g of n now we will see the uh, the uh, what you call the uh, graphical representation, right? Picturally, we'll see f of n, g of n for different cases. So here, if n uh, n is equal to number of input plus number of output, so uh, n is defined in terms of number of inputs or number of output. Generally, we, uh, we take n as the number of inputs. So now, when we say that the time complexity f of n is equal to o of g of n right when we say this one if and only if there exist two positive constants c and n naught such that okay such uh, such that f of n is less than or equal to c into g of n right so now if you see that this is the worst case time complexity right when we represent big o big o says that it is a worst case time complexity that means the actual computing time of your algorithm should be less than that particular bound. So that is why the f of n is always, if you represent to be in big O notation, the f of n will always be less than or equal to some constant c into g of n for all n greater than n naught. Okay, so that is the definition here. So big O is the upper bound. So whatever the computing time of your algorithm f of n will be lesser than that. 
So here graphically you can see that g of n is the sum computing time and I'm interested in c into g, uh, g of n, right? So this is the bound c into g of n. So your f of n, that is the actual computing time of your algorithm will be less than or equal to c into g of n. That is the uh, meaning of big O, right? And this is true for n greater than n naught, not n less than n naught, okay? That is why you can see here, uh, this, this definition will apply to n greater than n naught. So this is the representation of um, asymptotic upper bound, right? We say that asymptotic upper bound. So f of n is always less than or equal to c into g of n for all n greater than n naught and g of n is called an asymptotic upper bound of f of n and we write f of n equal to big O of g of n. It reads f of n is big O of g of n. So how to read this one? f of n is big O of g of n. Okay. So now that was the upper bound. Now we'll see the lower bound notation. The lower bound notation is the omega, right? We say the best case. Okay. This is the upper omega, upper case omega. Definition is f of n is equal to omega of g of n. When we tell f of n is equal to omega of g of n, the running time complexity f of n of the actual algorithm will be greater than g of n, right? Will be greater than g of n because this is the best case time complexity, right? So the uh, computing time will be greater than if and only if there exist two positive constants c and n naught such that for all n greater than or equal to n naught, right? F of n is greater than or equal to c into g of n so that so that is the idea here so if you see the in the in the graph you can see that uh, this is my uh, the best case time complexity which is c into g of n right this is the and now your f of n that is the actual computing time of your algorithm is greater is always it cannot be less than that the uh, the best case, right? It cannot be less than c into g of n. It is always greater than g of uh, c into g of n. Okay. For so here formally you can define f of n is greater than or equal to c into g of n for all n greater than n naught, and g of n is called an asymptotic lower bound of f of n. We write f of n is equal to big O of big omega of g of n and it reads f of n is omega of okay omega of g of n so that is the case here and now uh, if we combine both the uh, upper bound and the lower bound so where omega is a lower bound and big big o is the upper bound so now your the time complexity of your algorithm will always be in between the upper bound as well as the lower bound. So upper bound is big O, lower, lower bound is omega, right? The, the lower bound is omega. But here the n should be always greater than n naught. That is the condition. Now there is a third case. And the third case is called the tight bound and it is the theta notation. So in some cases, what happens in some algorithms, computing time uh, will be such that f of n is equal to big O of g of n and f of n is equal to omega of g of n. So both the worst case and the, the best case running time will be same. So in such a case, we call that algorithm as tight bound and that is represented using theta of g of n. So f of n is equal to theta of g of n if and only if there exists positive constants c1, c2, and n naught such that for all n greater than or equal to n naught c uh, f of n is always greater than c1 into g of n and which is less than um, uh, means f of n is less than c2 into g of n so g of n is both the upper bound and the lower bound of f of n right so here you can see this uh, picture really uh, here f of n is always greater than c1 into g of n and it is always f of n is always less than c2 into g of n. Hope you understood what is f of n. f of n is the actual computing time of your algorithm. It is the practical time of your algorithm you can uh, tell. So formally you can see that this is how it is defined. 
Okay, we write f of n is equal to theta of g of n. It reads f of n is theta of g of n, right? So now some uh, some questions for you. Okay, find out what is the asymptotic complexity. Uh, what is so there is there is also one more notation called as little o notation. Now whatever we have uh, spoken or discussed is about the big o notation. So there is a small o notation f of n is equal to small o of g of n. So what is that? Okay, analogous to small o, there is also one small omega, right? Small omega. This representation also little that is called as little omega. So find their definition and meaning. So uh, in what conditions? In what uh, scenarios this little o and little omega will be used? You, are, you have to uh, you have to find out. So here is just an example. Uh, just here uh, is an example, so just to show that. If, so if the frequency of the execution, if it is represented like this, f of n is equal to a m into n power m a plus a m minus one into n n power n minus one, so on plus a1 n and a0 so in this case what will happen is that the time complex the running time of the algorithm f of n is equal to big o of n power m right so uh, in this case the ma the maximum is what the uh, the biggest term is n power m right so here the time complexity will be so this is how it is uh, proved here i'm not i'm not going into the proof uh, into these details but just remember it is the it is the biggest term that in in the expression so now here okay uh, so this is how it is proved here and uh, similarly you can have uh, other uh, this one what you call the other things like f of n is uh, here in the, this case is omega of n power m and uh, in this case is the, uh, theta of n power m so all these cases you have to um, if you if you require you can uh, prove this right so related uh, to the previous concept, there is a corollary which says that if an algorithm has k statements whose order of magnitude are represented like this, c1 into n power m1, c2 n power uh, c2 n power m2, so on, ck n power mk. So in such case, what will happen? The actual the computing time f of n is equal to o of n power m, right? O of n power m, but where, what is m there? Where m is the maximum of m i, right? Where i varies from i equal to. So here the m will be defined by the maximum of m i and i varying from one to k. That is the uh, idea. So just I told in the in the previous slide that it is the maximum term. Okay, the the maximum uh, term that is uh, used that can be the uh, time complexity of the algorithm. So now, uh, just to uh, give you the importance of uh, constants, right? In in case of the time complexity. So there are uh, here I have noted down that there are two algorithms: the algorithm A and algorithm B means the time complexity A and time complexity B. O of uh, big O of n, big O of n square. So here uh, here it is a very clear, right? Clear cut. So there is no um, uh, superior or inferior algorithm here like that. Okay, because n n is always uh, less than n square so here. But when you add constants to this, like big O of ten n, if I tell ten n, and if I tell O of n square, so some algorithm. So now you see that the uh, for this particular case, right? The uh, if n is in this case, if the n is less than ten, right? If n is less than ten, then the B B is superior algorithm, not A. Though this is n ten n, right? This is O of n square, but this becomes superior. Uh, the, okay, the uh, B that means O of n square is superior than 10 n, right? That is you should remember here. And now here, uh, if n is greater than 10, then A becomes superior algorithm. And here in this case, 10 power 4 n uh, and O of n square. So here B becomes superior when n is less than 10 power 4 and uh, a becomes superior when n is greater than equal to uh, is greater than 10 power 4. So the, here the uh, whole idea is that uh, the constant also is very very uh, important and uh, based on the range right based on the range we have to select uh, okay based on the n value we have to select uh, the complexity of the algorithm.
and now this is the pictorial way right so there was an algorithm uh, algorithm in the previous slide of 10n and also n square you can see that this 10n the time complexity 10n is growing at a constant at a uh, at a what what you call it the at the uh, at this rate right 10n and you can see that n uh, in this case it is growing uh, in in terms of square right n square and it and uh, when n equal to 10 right this they meet each other and after that n uh, n square grows faster than uh, 10n right n square grows faster than uh, 10n so here uh, if you take the value and uh, if you take the values for n square and 10n and then plot the graph then you can see this interesting graph and now we will see the running time and uh, big bow notation okay the uh, we will take some algorithms you can also take some algorithms with different uh, um, time complexity one is in 10 n plus 2 log n n square plus 10 n n cube by 10 to power n right and and try to add the values of uh, n right you give the values of n in terms of thousands uh, ten thousands okay uh, lakhs and uh, crores like that you can give the value 10 power 6 10 power 9 all these things you can give and you can see what is the time taken so here it is uh, microseconds uh, here it is a milliseconds here you can see that so all those uh, uh, you can analyze now you see that if uh, if if you take 2 power n right if you take 2 power n and the n is just 100 values then it takes then you just imagine that it takes 4 into 10 to the power 12 okay uh, years right so this this many years so though your algorithm is of cubic complexity if, you, if your value is 10 power i think here it is 7 10 power 7 then it will take 3200 years to uh, complete the execution so so that that's why the n value is very very important and analyzing the complexity of the algorithm is very very significant okay and here uh, in the big O notation, uh, big O of one, right? It is the big O of one is the cost of applying the algorithm can be bounded independently of the value of n, and this is called the constant complexity. So, uh, O of one is the constant complexity. O of log n, the cost of applying the algorithm to the problems of sufficiently large size n can be bounded by a function of the form k log n where k is fixed constant and this is called the logarithmic complexity so this is a logarithmic complex this is a constant complexity this is a linear complexity this is n log n complexity this is quadratic complexity and this is a cubic complexity this is this is quartic complexity this is polynomial complexity this is uh, c power n is a com exponential complexity 2 power n is exponential complexity, e power n is exponential complexity, n factorial is a factorial complexity, right? So these uh, usually we, we usually uh, we avoid this time uh, this type of uh, complexity, right? So we we are happy usually we look for n square, and in the worst case we look for n cube algorithm, but uh, but we we want always n in terms of n and in terms of n square, right? So that is the um, idea here. And we will look all different types of algorithms in this particular course, right? When we go to the design strategies. And practically when, uh, when you run these algorithms like n log n, n log n, n square, n to power n. So this is what is representation. We have taken time, t is less than 250. You can see the graph, right? And when you take, take t is, uh, so t is 250, less than 250. Now, if I make t less than 500, then you can see that how this is growing, how this is shrinking, right? Okay, the uh, the graphs are shrink, uh, shrinking and they become almost, uh, okay, or almost in the uh, same uh, range they, they come. And you can see that when I, to, when I take less, t is less than um, 1000, then you can see that here, the 2 power n is growing here. See, the previous slide, 2 power n, uh, the n, n cube was growing, 2 power n was growing slowly and now when t is less than 500, the 2 power n is growing here and it is less than 1000, 2 power n is growing and you see here, if t is less than 5000, 2 power n is fastest growing time complexity, right, than n cube, right? So 2 power n is growing faster than 
n cube other all algorithms are growing slowly n n log n n square algorithms are growing slowly so we should avoid two power n uh, algorithms or cubic algorithms we, we should try to avoid so this is the practical time uh, time complexity by taking some large values right this is just to show you the uh, uh, how the uh, time complexity varies here and so there is uh, uh, there is some point to remember here there is no integer m such that n power m bounds to power n okay so it is 2 power n is not equal to big o of n power m for any integer m so an algorithm whose computing time is bounded below the omega of 2 power n is said to require an exponential time so this is uh, if, the, if the best case uh, is below if the time complexity okay is uh, is bounded below here yeah, below 2 power n is said to be an exponential time complexity so importance of uh, leading constants in g of n so if you compare 10 n square 100 log n right so uh, so there is a difference here so 10 n square is better than uh, right it is uh, 10 n square is uh, better than 100 n square algorithm 0.1 n square is certainly better than n square algorithm so all those so this is this is just to show that the importance of the constant so constant is also very very important however with the 2 power n algorithm improving leading constants or even employing high speed processor cannot result in dramatic change so 2 power n algorithms we should try to avoid and now uh, uh, related to the time complexity you should be, you should also be able to define what is the space complexity right so you have to you can go to the theoretical exercises of uh, horowitz sani and rajshekharan book right and also uh, self study in chapter number 2 right horowitz sani rajshekharan for rajshekharan for algorithms on elementary data structures right so that you can see so now we will begin the analysis of a sorting algorithm so we'll take a very simple sorting algorithm where uh, where the where the strategy is that given a set of six elements okay six elements are given so we will start with the uh, first element and we will start comparing all other elements against the first element right so now the first case will be i'm comparing second element with the first element so if the second element is lesser than the first element then i will swap it right so so at the end of this particular iteration right i will ensure that the smallest element is in the first position right similarly this in the second iteration the second smallest element will be in the second position the third smallest element will be in the third position so that is the idea here so if the element is smaller if the next element uh, if the current element is smaller than the then my uh, the uh, current element right so uh, then i have i need to swap it so here i will just show it here so i equal to one so i am taking the first element right and i am i am taking the first element and j is so j is second element here the counter so now i am checking that whether 15 the second element is smaller than the second element the answer is no right the second element is not smaller than the uh, first element so what will happen the j will get incremented right j will get incremented now i am checking again the whether the uh, whether the third element j third element which is at the position j equal to 3 is smaller than 10 so smaller than 12 yes right it is smaller than 12, 12. so what should i do i should swap it so uh, the swapped value here the 12 goes at third position j position and the 10 comes to the ith position right to the ith position and now uh, when j equal to 4 now i'm checking whether the fourth element is greater than the first element uh, for, uh, sorry a, uh, the fourth element is smaller than the first element no right so this will not get swapped similarly j j equal to 5 whether the fifth element is smaller than the first element the the condition is no here right and the when j equal to 6 whether whether this 16 is uh, smaller than 10 no right so no swapping will take place and now 
we have come to the uh, number of uh, number of elements have been exhausted that is j equal to 6 so now i will get incremented in the next loop so now one iteration is complete and the smallest element which is which is 10 is in the first position so now this i will remove it i will take it separately and i will keep it so now you see that remaining 10 is already taken and now the element is now the G i has moved to the second position so i equal to 2 and j starts from the third position so now here my comparison will be whether whether the 12 is less than 15 yes is less than 15 just swap it so 12 is swapped and 15 is uh, comes to the second position right here and now 12 15 now i'll see whether the uh, the 18 is smaller than 12 no right so no swapping will take place similarly whether 12 is whether 14 is smaller than 12 no right so no swapping will take place similarly 12 is uh, 16 is smaller than 12 no right so no swapping will take place and now we got the 12 at the second so we got the second smallest element that is the 12 so here 12 is with so now we got 10 in the first iteration i equal to 1 in the second iteration i equal to 2 we got 12 now i equal to 3 so i equal to 3 here j starts from fourth element so whether 18 is smaller than 15 no so no swapping will take place so now whether 14 is smaller than 15 yes so swapping will take place so 14 will come in the uh, in the third position here and 15 will go to the fifth position right uh, here fifth position and now again i will check uh, whether the last element that is 16 is uh, smaller than 14 no right so no swapping will take place and we are getting the third smallest element in, in the third iteration and now again the we are we are left out with three more elements and i becomes four j becomes five and now i again i check whether this 15 this uh, this j equal to j element right is smaller than uh, the i element that is the 18 yes so now swapping will take place and 15 will come to this this position and 18 will go here and now again i have to check whether 15 whether 16 is the next element that is j equal to 6 is smaller than 15 uh, no right so no swapping will take place here and now here we got 15 that is the fourth smallest element right we we we, we got the fourth smallest element right we got here 15 sorry not it is not for fourth smallest it is the yeah okay so 15 we got 15 here okay so now uh, remaining is 18 and 16 so now here uh, whether 18 whether 16 is smaller than 18 yes so now swapping will take place and now uh, 16 and 18 will be there and remaining is 18 so 18 is the uh, largest element in this particular uh, six element array so here we got 16 18 and now uh, we have we had already got 10 12 okay for um, uh, 14 15 16 and 18 so this is how the sorting algorithm works now let us try to analyze that how did we do sorting right so now in this particular slide if you see so when i is equal to when i was 1 we started the j the j pointer started from second element to the sixth element right i when i equal to 1 j started from second element to the sixth element so when i was 2 the j started from 3 to 6 when i was 3 to uh, 3 the j started from 4 to 6 and when i was 4 j was from 5 and 6 when i was 5 j was just 6 and now let us see that when i is equal to k j j will be from k plus 1th element to the k plus 1 position to n position for i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 so this itself gives a uh, very interesting uh, algorithm right so now let us formally put this idea for i equal to 1 to n minus 1 right for i equal to 1 to n minus 1 
the jth loop will go from i plus 1 to n right i plus 1 to n and uh, the exchange will take place based on the condition right if exchange of i and j content if required so now we'll formally write the algorithm so for i equal to 1 to n minus 1 for j equal to i plus 1 to n do if a of i is less than a of j then continue or else exchange exchange and continue right so the exchange is like this and right? the exchange code is like this if if a um, uh, if a of i is less than a of j then continue else you swap it right this already you know t equal to a of i a of i becomes a of j a of j becomes t and then continue so this is the code what uh, for sorting and now let us try to analyze so the algorithm started for i equal to 1 to n minus 1 right for i equal to 1 to n minus 1 so we know that the here there is a uh, here here there is a two two operations right here there is a two operation i equal to i plus 1 and then i is greater than n minus 1 okay you can uh, take that here two two operations will take place and the frequency is n minus 1 and what about this uh, the inner inner part the inner part j equal to i plus 1 to n and i will compare if a i a of i is less than a of j then and else so there are based on this condition something will happen and swapping will happen right here here a of i is less than uh, less than j then it will simply keep quiet or else it will do swapping so we'll see that the uh, this condition requires three of so here uh, before that we'll uh, we'll see this one uh, if for this for loop there is a two operation here and there is one so now total operations here is see here is for this for loop this is four this is three here in this case if uh, condition is three if the condition is true here then it will be zero means no swapping takes place whereas if the else if the if the element is smaller right then eight operations for swapping will take place right so here uh, this will take for all j times in the best case uh, uh, all j times this is zero right zero number of operations in the worst case all j times will be this will be executed so now uh, yeah this is interesting uh, this is an interesting for loop right because j goes from j plus 1 to uh, j uh, j uh, j plus 1 to 1 right so uh, j plus 1 to 1 so here you can see that this when i equal to 1 the j goes okay uh, runs n minus 1 times when i equal to 2 the j loop runs n minus 2 times when i equal to n minus 1 it will it will run one time so now this is very very uh, interesting we will now um, try to compute the best case as well as the worst case time time complexity what is the best case time complexity uh, the best case time complexity will be where there will be no swapping required the elements are already in the sorted order but whereas the here in this case the if the elements are already in the in, um, increasing sequence if the elements are in the decreasing sequence that will be the worst case time for this complexity uh, for this algorithm where the swapping will take place in every uh, iteration right every iteration the or every uh, element will be swapped here so now let us try to analyze the algorithm so in the best case and uh, as i already told that the elements are in the sorted order so then the best case this will be executed so 4 into n minus 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus i will just explain you what this is 4 into n minus 1 so 4 into n minus 1 is this this is the 4 this is the operation for the first for loop 4 into n minus 1 plus 3 into right plus 3 into you can see here right plus 3 plus 3 plus 0 you can see this uh, this 0 comes from here okay this this is 3 plus 3 plus 0 this is for the best case 3 plus 3 plus 3 uh, 3 plus 3 plus 0 multiplied by this one n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 dot 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 to n times so just let us see this um, i'm just explaining you here 4 into n minus 1 this is for the best case data 3 plus 3 plus 0 multiplied by n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus dot 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 up to 1 and now if you simplify this 
simply you will get it right if you uh, for this one you can simplify the, this is the formula you can write n into n minus 1 divided by 2 when you substitute n as n minus 1 you will get n minus 1 into n divided by 2 you simply simplify this one and um, you will get it t best is proportional to 3n square plus n minus 4 you will get it here so t best is uh, is a quadratic it is a it is a quadratic uh, time complex it is a square right so this is the omega of n square algorithm now let us see the best case so in the best case if you try to analyze 3 plus 3 plus here instead of 0 we have to do swapping here right because this is the best case in the worst case we need to do swapping of the elements so instead of 0 here 8 operations will come into picture so I will just show you where these 8 operations so this else condition will be executed and 8 operate so it will be 3 plus 3 plus 8 multiplied by this n minus 1 into n minus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus dot 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 right so it will be exit so we'll see the worst case time complexity so worst case time complexity the elements are are in the uh, in the decreasing sequence right they are in the decreasing sequence so here 4 into n minus 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 8 multiplied by n minus so 8 is for swapping right the swapping the elements so swapping will take place for all the cases for all the cases swapping will take place and now you see the time complexity you see the same way you simplify this n minus 1 this is the formula n into n minus 1 divided by 2 simple where substitute n minus 1 instead of n you will get this and the time the worst case time complexity is proportional to 7 n square minus 3 n minus 4 and the worst case time complexity oh, is omega it is the big o of n square right overall this is a now you, we saw that the best case and the worst case running time right in terms of order notation is n square so this is an example for n square algorithm theta of n square algorithm right this is an example for the so time complexity you can just simply plot it both the best case as well as the worst case time complexity right so this is the worst case time complexity this is the best case time complexity right 3 uh, 7 n square right so 7 n square is the uh, yeah worst case time complexity this is the best case time complexity 3 n square right so <clears throat> there are different uh, right a complete uh, you can take different problems a complete study of different sorting algorithms right you can refer this book sorting algorithms on parallel machines and uh, you can profile selection sort bubble sort insertion sort try to find an expression for average computing time generate a sequence of n random numbers sort the list let the actual time be t1 shuffle the list and resort it let the time be t2 and the average time complexity will be average of t1 t2 t3 so okay so in between um, like you shuffle shuffle the numbers and uh, uh, and just calculate the sorting time and take the average so that will be the average sorting time so now another very interesting uh, problem uh, okay here uh, computing standard deviation of a set of numbers okay right so this is a two stage algorithm here i am developing a two stage algorithm and uh, the stage one is computing the average so in order to calculate the uh, standard deviation we need to calculate the average and the second part is computing variance and standard deviation second part so computing the average is very simple you already know sum equal to zero for i equal to one to n do sum equal to sum plus e of i and average is sum uh, after adding all these uh, elements then simply sum divided by n will give the average so here the time complexity of this algorithm that is stage one is 6n plus 3. Now let us see computing the variance. So in stage two, uh, the, the variance you can see that it involves for i equal to 1 to n, do s equal to s plus a of i minus average whole square, and this requires phi, uh, phi operations. And I use this, uh, okay, all these things. I, I use the operations, and here the time complexity is 8n plus 4. So 6n plus 3 for computing the average, and 8n plus 4 for computing the standard uh, deviation. So now the running time of this algorithm is 14n plus 7. 
14 n plus 7 and this is and here there is no best case there is no worst case right so the best case and worst case is same same that is n so that is why this is a theta of n algorithm now here there is some uh, question to think uh, see we are using standard deviation is equal to square root of variance right square root of we are using a square root function so is this a function call or an algorithm by itself right computing a square root is a algorithm or is a function at all uh, so uh, a function call so if it is if you if you uh, assume that this is a function call then you can take one unit of time otherwise if it is an algorithm then what is the computing time what is the whether it is infinity right so it cannot be infinity right so uh, just to think uh, how uh, okay how how this um, uh, uh, the okay computing the square root is uh, okay you are taking it as a one unit time okay how just to think on these particular issues so now some related very interesting problem is that given a m into n matrix of m samples each with the n dimensional feature vector compute the variance covariance matrices right so this is also a very interesting problem prepare a frequency distribution table histogram for n observations then compute the average and standard deviation so here uh, for these problems you need to devise the algorithm as well as do best case and worst case time complexity analysis perform feature reduction using variance covariance analysis perform feature reduction using principal component analysis implement on parallel so these are some of the um, advanced problems uh, uh, which you can take to design and uh, design and analyze algorithms right so now we will see one such algorithm uh, given m samples okay given m samples there are m people okay there are m samples in n dimensional space okay n dimensional space means for a, a one sample there is a n uh, features right n features so uh, now here compute the k nearest neighbors right so now here uh, the example which you can take is here is that there are uh, there are uh, 100 students and every 100 every student has marks of um, six subjects okay he has taken six courses so he has six marks that that marks represents dimension okay the marks represents dimension so he, one student is having now uh, uh, six subjects marks and uh, and i need to find the best student right the the top student in the class okay i need i need to uh, identify the k, k k nearest neighbor means uh, if i select randomly some student and then i ask him uh, who are the neighbors of this particular student okay let if 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 uh, let us take the three three neighbor means uh, who are on the uh, means who are the three people on the left side who are the three people on the right side okay based on the in the merit list so uh, for such problems you need to calculate the distance right so in such a case you simply cannot say that the student is there you have to calculate the distance between uh, the code uh, between the marks okay yeah, you have to calculate the distance between uh, that student which i have requested and with all other students okay so till all the 99 students you, you must be calculating it and you are calculating for every subject okay so that is k number of times that if there are k number of uh, if there are n number of uh, uh, what is n dimensional means there is n uh, so here if and then up to um, uh, how many uh, you you need to identify the uh, what you call the nearest neighbors so based, after that you have to identify who are the nearest neighbors so based on the distance you need to select so this kind of algorithm okay this kind of algorithm has the time complexity of uh, o of n into m square so time complexity uh, in such case will be o of n into m square and the space complexity in such algorithm will be o of m square right o of m square so uh, you can just uh, take some example and uh, you can do it here uh, so here in this case uh, since this is a distance matrix right here there is a distance matrix see um, so is there any efficient algorithm for this one yes there is an efficient algorithm because when you see the matrix you are filling you are computing the value again and again right you are computing the value again and again like 
uh, here computing d of i comma j student is same as computing from j student to i i to student so here what you can do is that you can reduce the half of the computing time by just putting the statement compute d i d d of i uh, d of i comma j and simply substitute where there is a d of j comma i simply substitute d i comma j right so you divide you have uh, you will simply uh, reduce half of the time here so here because distance matrix is symmetric because this is a symmetric matrix uh, rework out the time complex so what will have, what will be the time complexity in this particular algorithm so that uh, that needs to be analyzed okay uh, sort each row in the distance matrix Okay, uh, once you sort each row in the distance matrix, note the sequence of column numbers. After sorting, the first set of k numbers in the sequence gives the k nearest neighbors of the sample. So, another idea is to um, uh, given a student, right, given a sample who's you want to find the nearest neighbor, you simply sort the entire entire row. So, sorting the entire row, you already know that it is an n square algorithm right so and there are how many rows are there there are m rows so it is in cubic algorithm so each row has m samples o of m square for sorting there are m rows so it is in row of m cube for finding k nearest neighbors so this is an interesting case for the parallel implementation right so there are <clears throat> different uh, you can uh, different versions of uh, problems you can analyze here implement and perform detailed analysis of K nearest neighbor. So there is a in machine learning there is an algorithm called KNN algorithm. So apply this KNN algorithm for different samples and try to see what is the best case, worst case. And uh, if you take a data mining course, then uh, you will see that there is a problem on single linkage, complete linkage, average linkage, agglomerative clustering. All these um, also compare the results with Zhang's algorithm. So these are some of the interesting algorithms with respect to distance matrix. Study the performance analysis of three dimensionality reduction methods by computing the compactness of the class, separation between the classes, and misclassification considering the data for which the class labels are known. So this is also one uh, clustering type of algorithm. Very famous um, idea. Okay, very famous. Uh, uh, like uh, the, the very famous clustering algorithm is K-means clustering algorithm. You can just uh, go through it. Okay, so your uh, uh, final assessment, your final uh, term, uh, final C three assessment will be you will be based on some advanced algorithms like this. Okay, perform the analysis of classifiers with original data with the PCA. With the, this PCA stands for principal component analysis and uh, with a transformed feature. Right, so this is also another you can transform the features and then you can use it. Uh, an applicative work on how transform to find the sequence of lines and length of the line. So here also you have, so th uh, this is a transform feature. Uh, how transform is uh, you, are trans you are transforming the coordinate uh, axis into the polar form, right? Polar coordinate axis, R theta form, and then you, you, uh, you try to find the sequence of lines and length of the lines, right? So thank you very much.